All right, hi everybody. I am Natalie Carell. I am doing this live on Facebook today with the Integrate Network. I am on their list of providers um, here in the St. Louis area. So I am a St. Louis based registered and board certified art therapist. Um, I am a trained EMDR therapist as well. So I integrate my art therapy work as well into my EMDR work. Um, so under that trauma-focused lens, I offer, also offer workshops, supervision um, for counselors and art therapists that are um, newly trained, as well as um, agency consulting services. So I collaborate with organizations to create specialized workshops um, that also address you know different agency needs. So my heart really lies in the community arts, and that's something that. Um, the community building is really is really where a passion of mine is as well. So I provide consulting services that aid in the development and growth of programming for agencies too. So community building within and outside of agency walls um, is my passion. So under that trauma focused lens, um, I have been trained additionally with attachment style um, focus as well and. Um, looking at perspective of both how trauma and attachment styles inform, you know, current struggles that, that my clients are, are facing. So that kind of gives you an idea who I am. Um, I am new to the Integrate Network and would love to collaborate with people. So please feel free to reach out to me. We're going to um, let you know how you can contact me through uh, an, an upcoming Instagram um, as well as you know you can text or email as well so we'll post all of my contact information as well so you can get a hold of me and please do so i'm going to talk a little bit about how art therapy um you know the trauma-informed art therapy that i work i work with and i'm going to give you some examples of some of that work i'm going to go a little bit deeper into that on a blog post um, on the integrate network website so I'm going to kind of give you an overview today here, and then you'll get more information later on, so you can look forward to that. So I want to talk a little bit about how the reasons why art therapy um, is beneficial to people who are um, experiencing or have experienced trauma. So our, um, I'm, going to, I'm looking down because I have some notes, so that just so you know what I'm doing down here. So the right side of our brain is where our um, images are stored. So that is also where a lot of our... Um, the pictures our pictures come from. So when we have the trauma in our lives, it can it it can get activated, and we can be um, we can our brain struggles to understand what what's going on. So those images that we are seeing um, need to come out, and we need to you know our body is holding on to that. So we're finding ways for our um, brains to have words when we don't have words. So we're pulling out that trauma that's stored in our body through the images that we're creating. Um, so when we get activated in our, you know, in that sort of distressed state, the imaging can come out when we don't have words. And that works a lot with kids when, you know, that's not really their way of communicating anyway. So not only with children, but with adults too can be beneficial. So our art therapy really helps the trauma, our trauma survivors um, reconnect with the image-based parts of our brains. Um, it's a process that calms the parts of the brain that have been overworked by the trauma. So we are, we're activating um, at times when it's safe in the office together and pulling out those images and dealing with them. And that sometimes is through my EMDR work where um, we're reprocessing some of those um, parts of our brains that are just struggling. So that is kind of what um, the gist of, you know, why art therapy is connecting with our brains. And so that gives you a little bit of a, um, of an overview. So some simple, so of course the, the activities look different per client. And as we're, we're pulling out this trauma, you know, we're having some distressing symptoms and that's okay. That just means we're activating it. We're dealing with it and we're pulling it out of our bodies. So some simple art activities to help soothe and helping a client, um, regulate themselves again is really important. So, um, so we want to raise awareness of our physical and mental state to, to educate our clients and build that sense of safety again, and as well as, you know, that resilience and lifelong tools. So I want a sustained, a sustained healthy and a sustained healing. So in order for clients to sustain that on their own outside of the walls of our therapy session, they need some tools in order to do that. So there's a lot of time spent on that. 
a lot of time spent on how to regulate ourselves, on how to sustain that healing, you know, as we're getting maybe triggered throughout our days and that sort of thing. So some of our trauma memories are, you know, they're just sensory memories. So people feel them in their bodies and they react in their bodies. So we want to find ways to get those out. So I'm going to pull out a couple examples to show you. And again, um, you'll get to see these images more deeply on the blog post and I'll get to explain them a little bit further, but just to give you a sense of um, some of the activities that we can do. So of course, worry dolls. So when working with some clients who have um, heightened worries, especially with the younger kids, not understanding what to do with all those worries or, or how to um, hold them. So we want to pull them out. We don't want them to have to carry around those worries throughout their day. So here's an example. Um, it's a picture that I took of these worry dolls that a client had made. So we identified, we made a list here, we identified the feelings and the worries, and then she created a color per each worry. And they're just on these little um, clothespins. And we wrapped them in the in the yarn and then she created a face for them as well. So I done, again, identifying feelings, identifying the worry, and then pulling it out of the body into an object that can hold that worry for her. So then we wanted to contain it. So she created this jar to hold the worries in. So literally containing the worries into a jar so then she's not holding on to them throughout her day. So I'll go um, into that a little bit deeper, of course, on the blog post. That's one example. Another example is we have um, masks. So the mask is a good way to... It's a, there's lots of metaphors when it comes to mask making. Um, who we see ourselves in the world around us, and then the inside of the mask can be who we really feel like we are on the inside that maybe we don't share with people. And in relation to trauma, it can be, you know, this directive can go so many ways. When, when a person is having that sense of, you know, maybe feeling activated or triggered in the moment, they might feel like everybody around them knows even if they don't. And so the way that they feel in those activated moments could look one way and how they, or how they feel on the inside versus outside. So there's just a lot of work in um, mask making that can help um, express how they're feeling, what's going on with them and helping them understand what it's, you know, what's, what's happening. With teenagers, um, I use a lot of uh, collage materials it's they are um, it's really good because they don't have to come up with that those images or draw those images on their own so as far as their abilities with art making um, that kind of gets removed and they don't have to worry about not making it look exactly the way that they wanted it to look or it to be you know this wonderful art piece so in pulling um, all of those images through collage material and then adding words especially with the teenagers you know of course developmentally using words is more kind of where they're at. And so using the collage materials with the words helps to create um, images where they can really express how they're feeling. Um, so that's really great for, especially for the teenagers. Um, when we talk about building those tools in order to sustain when, um, when we're feeling activated outside of the office, one thing that um, I've done before is creating rain sticks and so rain sticks where and this is this is literally out of um either toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls and then plaster over them tape together um so you do kind of a paper towel roll with nails inside and then just dried beads plastered together and painted and it's super simple super cheap and it's something where they can sit and you know, using some of those mindfulness tools of, of quietly sitting and breathing, and you know, pouring that rain stick back and forth, and that helps with um, calming and regulating. And that's something a tool that they could take with them. They can make a small one, they can make a bigger one. So those are things that it's fun to make, as well as a tool to use, um, you know, throughout their day. When I was talking about um, a little bit more about community arts, that's something that is really um, valuable, you know, as far as building social skills, as far as um, 
creating community. When I worked in a domestic violence shelter, we created a piece that was actually in the shelter. So it was hanging from the second story and it came down and this was just out of sheets that were dyed. And they were able to, each survivor was able to create an image that was held together by um, just tying them to the uh, to other people. So I'm gonna turn it this way. It says, I'm not a victim, I'm a survivor. So building that community of there's other people going through the same thing that, that I'm going through and we're in this together and we're healing together. And that sense of community and normalcy um, creates a very wonderful, a wonderful way of healing some of that trauma that um, they're holding on to. When I, um, I do some work with the Missouri Art Therapy Association and I was a community arts board member and we were doing a lot with um, the community arts at that time and we did, we worked with different agencies in, in a lot of outdoor programming. So one thing we did was um, community mandala. So the sense of that we're all connected, we're all in this together again. And we were doing, um, creating the community mandala to express yourself. So you would, you would make one and you would take one. So what it ended up looking like was, um, let me pull this up. So we had lots of art supplies out and they could create in a bottle cap you know, either how they were feeling or just playing around with supplies, whatever they were interested in. And then um, we glued them all together in this mandala. And we educated the community on what a mandala was and, and what it was like to um, work all together. So there was a lot of community working together and building um, as well. So, you know, using that Community arts is not just about building the community together, but also educating the community on what others are going through or even identifying possibly what they're going through and not realizing it. So when you get into the community and doing that kind of work, there's so many benefits that could come from that. Um, and with my uh, consulting services, that's really what I wanted to jump into is helping people understand where they can educate as well as create that community for, for different people. So. Um, so I have lots of examples. Like I said, I'll show more on the blog post and get more um, deeper into that. So that's just something that I wanted to um, to share. So there's lots of ways that art can be used for the, for trauma based um, trauma based healing. And you know, I'm just kind of touching the tip of the iceberg on this, and um, I can't wait to hear what questions you have and um, what more information you wanna know about. I'll be happy to um, do more videos on some of the community-based work that I do or any other questions you have. So please feel free to um, post those questions, email me, um, send me a message, whatever you need to do. I'm not currently on Facebook, so if you send it to the Integrate Networks um, Facebook information, then they will also make sure it gets to me. So I look forward to hearing from all of you and appreciate your time. Thanks so much.